I'm Dr. Trent Burrup, founder of the Institute of Chiropractic and Acupuncture Therapy. And the topic of this video is cranial adjusting. Your cranium is made up of 24 bones that fit together to surround and protect the brain. And it used to be that doctors thought these bones were rigid and solid. In the early 1900s, Dr. William Sutherland, an osteopathic physician, discovered that these bones actually move. Your whole cranium actually flexes, pumps, and expands and contracts in a manner to actually circulate the fluid around the brain. That fluid, the cerebral spinal fluid, is what carries nutrition to the brain and it carries waste products away. So it's important that those bones move to keep that fluid circulating. If something were to happen to that rhythm, for example, the bones get locked up and stuck, or maybe that rhythm becomes asymmetrical from side to side, then it affects how that fluid circulates and it can cause all kinds of health problems. The obvious ones would involve brain health. For example, someone might develop depression or anxiety or seizures or autism or brain fog or any kind of brain health issue. But people could also develop headaches from cranial bone imbalances, any kind of headache, depending on how those bones in the head get restricted. Some people might experience visual disturbances or hearing problems or ringing in the ears or tinnitus or vertigo and dizziness. That motion also keeps mucus moving through the sinuses. So a problem in this cranial rhythm could also disrupt mucus flow. People who get chronic sinus infections or sinus congestion, by adjusting those bones and getting that motion happening, it can actually drain the sinuses out. Those are the obvious things, but what else might get out of balance? The purpose of your brain is to control and regulate how everything works in the body. So potentially there are all kinds of other health issues that if the brain's not functioning very well, cranial adjusting and getting that brain working better could affect all kinds of health problems in the body. So how do you adjust the cranial bones? Let's show you. After the cranium has been evaluated, there are a few different ways that the correction can be made. Some of those corrections happen by hand. One of the most common ways to adjust the cranium is with what's called craniosacral therapy, which was developed by Dr. John Upledger. With craniosacral therapy, the pressure that's applied to the bones is about five grams, which is the weight of a nickel. It's a very gentle, low force type of an adjustment where we just hold with very light pressure in the direction that the bone needs to be released. And we hold that until we feel the release happen. Another technique that is used is from sacro-occipital technique, which was developed by Dr. Desjarnet. In this technique, we use about a pound of pressure, but we also utilize the person or the patient's respiration with this technique. For example, I'll have Sherry take a breath in and breathe out. And as she breathes in, I apply a light, about a pound of pressure in the direction the bone needs to move. And as she breathes out or exhales, then we let that pressure go. So breathe in and out and in and out. And we do that until we feel the, the bone release or the correction be made. One of my favorite techniques, which is a little faster, is to use various tools and instruments. One of my favorite tools to use is a percussion device. And when we turn this down really low, and when we have a soft pad on it, when the cranium's restricted, we can come through and basically just kind of sweet talk some motion into the bones with some vibration or percussion type of, of force until that releases. This is also a great technique when someone has cranium issues that are leading to sinus problems, like sinus congestion, because we can come right across those sinus bones and free up the mucus that may be trapped in there and get the sinuses draining for the person. Whatever technique we use, once we make a correction, at the end, we're always gonna stop and evaluate to see if the correction was made and by feeling the cranial rhythm. And that's how corrections are made. One of the common questions that I get asked when we find cranial restrictions is, why did these bones get locked up, stuck, or misaligned in the first place? There are two main reasons why that happens. The obvious one would be a head trauma, if someone were to get hit in the head or fall and hit their head. But the second reason the cranial bones become restricted are reactions to things that happen in the body. 
For example, if someone were to have an allergic reaction to something, those head bones have a tendency to, to lock down or get stuck. If someone were to get a cold or a flu, that infection will cause those cranial bones to become restricted for a period of time. If someone experiences mental or emotional stress, those head bones will restrict or lock down again. And after the person experiences the stress or experiences the allergy reaction or gets over the cold or flu, the head bones are supposed to start moving again. But sometimes they don't. Sometimes they stay restricted and then it requires a cranial adjustment by someone who's been trained in cranial therapy to balance that out. So my invitation to you is if you have any of those symptoms that we talked about or you've ever experienced a head trauma and if you've never had your cranial system evaluated, you would be very wise to have that evaluated by someone who's trained in cranial sacral therapy. Thanks for watching.